here's my tonic. What's this? Is your ear messed up now? talk about modes in a little bit and we're gonna you're gonna hear some different ones I'm, and I'll probably improvise a little bit over each over just these couple of bass notes maybe with this one too playing just D's and A's and if you heard something like this wait a minute let me tell you what's going on here first it is Friday the 13th of September and we're it's a kind of interesting day because I think it's the first time in, in 19 years that we have a full moon on Friday the 13th, which means a lot here in San Jose because of one of our bizarre tourist attractions, the Winchester Mystery House. So they've got a big horror thing going on there tonight with Friday the 13th, in honor of Friday the 13th and the full moon all at the same time. So if you want to uh, be caught in a crowd doing some, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Some spooky things, I guess. Come visit the Winchester Mystery House. It actually is a pretty cool place. Um, what I was doing here, well, wait, I got a few things. First, the big news of the week is Flash. This is our news Flash. No more Flash. And that is because we have uh, moved on to a new video player that you have more controls over. You can slow things down to like 75%, similar to what you have at YouTube. So that can, be, that can mean a lot. Um, you know, anyway, I'm, I'm sure a lot of times you've wanted to do that with various videos. I try to play things slow most of the time, but sometimes I don't get around to it. The two lessons that came out this week, one of them didn't really need a slowdown. The two, my two lessons. We of course had My Sharia More by, um, that Max did for, of Stevie Wonder tune. And then okay, at the beginning of the week, here it is. I think I flashed this during the lesson too, but one of the strangest album covers of all time where it kind of looks three-dimensional. Works great. For this album it makes it makes it fit into your rack a little strangely um then of course two years later you have a good idea do it again so they did it with the next album shoot out at the fantasy factory um not quite as great an album but not bad either so um but yeah the early days of traffic and and of course they um i think i told might have told this story but of course the the album before this john barleycorn we have of course have a lesson on john barleycorn uh, was supposed to be a Steve Winwood solo album, but he recruited his two old traffic mates. They'd been broken up for a couple of years while Steve went off and did Blind Faith, and recruited two of the other three members of Traffic to play along on his album, and it became a new Traffic album. So, kind of a cool phase that 1970 to 73 win uh, window for Traffic. They had one more album that came out around the same time. Since 74, it was called uh, When the Eagle Flies. Um, and I don't know if I was just kind of growing away from them, but it started seeming like they were running out of gas. Um, whereas John Barleycorn and Low Spark seemed like they were um, flying. They were just cooking. So um, anyway, the, so that's the big news. The, the big news again this week is browsers and, and video players. Um, right now on your PC, it will only work, the, vi the lesson videos will only work in Chrome or Firefox. Um, any kind of uh, the other browsers, Safari, Internet Explorer, and less common ones are not really compatible yet. But um, on any um, of your uh, devices that are not a computer, like an Android or a phone or something like that, whatever your native browser is, including, I tried this on my phone, and Safari on the phone works. So it's kind of, but that's okay. So. Uh, I usually have Chrome and Firefox open on multiple computers all the time anyway. So um, anyway, that's that's kind of the big news. We've moved on from Flash. And um, let's see, anything else? Oh, a quick mention of Vanessa. I want to thank her for showing us that cool video of Crosby and his The Lighthouse Band, who were people that backed him up on, I believe it was his album called Lighthouse. That, but um, definitely pretty cool. You know, Crosby's still a bit... A bit out there in his um, idealism, but that's that's okay, I guess. 
at times. Um, what I want to talk about, though, was Dean's question, bringing up modes, and that is um, that I think you, you've got the right notion that any given key signature, if we see three sharps, we, we normally would think that's either the major key that has those three sharps or the minor key that has those three sharps, right? And the major key for three sharps is A. The relative minor key is the note, is the scale that starts on the sixth note of that. That would be F sharp. Well, there are five other relative modes that all have the same key signature. And each mode is tied to one step of the scale, the same way the minor scale, or the Aeolian mode, is tied to the sixth step. So I think you would figured out that the Dorian mode is tied to the second one, which means B Dorian is the relative Dorian key. That means that that's the Dorian scale that has three sharps in it. C sharp Phrygian. Phrygian is the third mode, so C sharp Phrygian would be the relative mode, the relative Phrygian mode to A major. Got that? Mixolydian is based on the fifth, Lydian's based on the fourth. And what I was going to do now is play, is, is just kind of improvise a little bit with a few of those different things. So if you heard this, be, I'm, I'm a, these are all going to be, these are now not going to be relative modes. These are going to be parallel modes, meaning they're all going to be D. So to play in D major, I'm going to follow the key signature of D, which is two sharps. consider the next mode one less sharp by flatting the seventh note boy and as soon as I do that it reminds me of so that melody right there is in the the key of D, but it's D mixolydian because it had a flatted seventh. I had C natural in that in that run. And what did I just do right there? I use C sharp again. I went back into major. Here's here's our major mode. Solidian one. Now, if I flat one more note, if I get rid of my F sharp, now I have no sharps. So I'm playing D to D, no sharps and flats, which means I've got the key signature of C major. D is the second note of C, that means I'm playing in the D Dorian mode. So here's my again D Dorian sound, D, E, F natural, G, A, B, C natural, and D. If I change one more note, if I flat the sixth, and throw a B flat in there, I've now got the key signature of one flat, which is F major, and D is step six of F, so I'm in D minor now. Okay, sort through all that a little bit and see if, see if you can have it make sense.
that D minor with F in the bass is just such a, oh man, bad nails. Okay, I can't play much more. But I do have one more thing I want to tell you. I'm going to grab the easiest way to get into an open D tuning. Have another guitar. Because our other song this week was a special request from my partner and good friend, Matt Williams, who is back in Australia now for a little while. He was here for a couple of weeks. We couldn't quite get him on, on camera, I'm sorry to say. But, um, but he, he came up with a list of songs. And I think I talked about this a few weeks ago when he was here. He said, you got to do a Christopher Cross song. I said, are you sure? Is there any guitar playing in Christopher Cross songs? Well, sure enough, there was. I just kind of missed it. <laughs> stretch here. There it is. They get easy but weird. Finally gets a little more normal. Not yet. Now. There, we finally get a chord that sounds real. We finally get to a major chord after these three or four or five bizarre sounding things. That's not too bad. That's not too bad either. Minor seventh kind of sound there. Um, then we hear some real minor seventh chords. Anyhow, it was pretty cool. So I'm, I'm glad that uh, that I took the time to go out out of my comfort zone and listen to a song that kind of escaped my radar in 1970, 1980, when it, uh, when it was all over, all over the airwaves. So, uh, okay. That is all I want to talk about with sailing. And let's see, I think I, boy, I did modes. Um, I think I've done everything, except I didn't really finish Cobble Creek, did I? Cause it does one other weird thing. It starts off in this Mixolydian scale. the B flat in. So so now it kind of is becomes minor even though it didn't sound like it at the beginning. It was mixolydian to begin with. I can remember the rest. It does the same thing of course so I can remember that.
Anyway, hmm. Gotta, gotta resurrect that one. And I haven't had any students work on Embryonic Journey for years, but uh, it's still a really cool tune. Uh, let's see, I had, oh, one more thing. Uh, we're coming up, we're like two weeks, two and a half weeks or so away from camp. So really soon, if anybody is still thinking about joining us, we, only, we have 19 people signed up. I was about to send out an email to everybody that's uh, coming asking to request what you want to do. If you want to have a lesson with me or Max or Jim Bruno or Doug Young or Dave Nachmanoff, um, want to work on songwriting with Dave, I'm going to probably have a Slack Key class. Um, and so kind of laying out the schedule uh, mostly will be based on responses I get from the people who are coming. So we definitely have room for a few more. If you're thinking about joining us, get a hold of me quickly and we'll make sure that you're in. And if not, I look forward to seeing the, uh, the group that we have coming up. I will still be back for a couple more weeks. I think we have two more Fridays before camp starts. And uh, the week of camp, we'll see what, we, what, what happens. So, okay, that is it. Uh, it's heating up here again in California. We just never know. It was cold last week, and now it's supposed to be close to 100 again today. So, got to wrap this up and stop sweating all over the guitar. Okay, see you next week. <laughs>